Welcome to Algonquin Provincial Park where we're staying at Mule Lake Campground. This is a beautiful little gem of a campground along the Highway 60 corridor. Mm -hmm. We are going to hike, bike, and paddle our way through this park. So we'll see what other shenanigans we can get ourselves into. And we're so glad we can share this with you because we almost didn't make it. We almost didn't make it here. Stay tuned. We are Cheryl and Ben Coles. We've been camping together for over 35 years. A few years ago, we started doing video reviews of Ontario Provincial Parks to help people when researching places to visit. We are now in season four of our park reviews. We hope this helps you when deciding where to have your next camping adventure. Thanks for coming along, Camping with the Coles. Algonquin. We are Yay. going to Algonquin Park for four nights. We are so looking forward to it. The weather's supposed to be really nice, mid-teens, uh, sunny. This is going to be a great trip. Yeah, we haven't been in a while. Does this seem familiar to you? It yeah. Kinda, yeah. It kind of seems like we did this before. What happened yesterday? What happened? Hmm. <laughs> to Algonquin Park. We're going for five nights. It is prime leaf peeping season. So leaf we're really looking forward peeping. to it. Peeking. Leaf okay. peeping. Peeping? Yeah, Peep. we're like peeping toms. We're peeping at leaves. Okay. <laughs> so five nights, we're looking forward to it. Weather forecast is supposed to be great. Sunny, uh, mid-teens. Mm -hmm. So let's get this thing moving. Forward. So we were all set to head off to Algonquin Park for five nights. So looking forward to it. Hopped in the truck, pulled out of the driveway, and within about a hundred meters, the truck was just revving and I didn't have any power. And I'm like, what is going on? So being a techie kind of guy, I figure, you know what, reboot, like you do with a computer. So I pulled over, turned off the truck, turned it back on, and uh, I couldn't get it going over 30 kilometers per hour. We went about uh, a kilometer and a half from home. Uh, we just had the truck in for some work. <laughs> we just had the truck in for some work uh, a week and a half ago at Canadian Tire nearby. So I pulled into Canadian Tire and as soon as I pulled in, I could smell something burning and we had a look and all this fluid is gushing out from uh, under the hood. So turns out we blew a transmission line and uh, it's special order. They can't get it until uh, tomorrow. So it looks like we're missing our first night at Algonquin and it's beautiful weather. Uh, hopefully we can get there tomorrow. So we unhooked our trailer from the truck. Um, we're gonna have to call our buddy John, see if he can uh, pick up our trailer for us and get it out of here. And we also have to take the kayaks off the roof because uh, the truck can't be raised up on the hoist with the kayaks on because it's fairly low roof. So that's our Good times. Uh, Good times. first day at Algonquin. Yeah. We'll see how things go tomorrow. Yeah. So that's it. That's what happened to us yesterday. Go figure. Yeah. So today we've been waiting all morning. Uh, it turned out the part came in around 1130 and then they had to install it. Uh, we just anxiously awaited all day and did some busy work because we do not want to lose any time at Algonquin. We want to get as much as we can there. So uh, we actually hit the road about quarter to five. So That's a late one. Yeah, this is not something we ever recommend. We're going to be pulling into Algonquin in the dark, filling up our water tank there, setting up everything in the dark. Sorry to anybody that we interrupt that, that late at night. Yeah. But I have to say, thank you to Canadian Tire on Victoria Street in Kitchener. Yes, we were able, right away. Yeah, we were able to limp in there and we couldn't go any further than that. And yeah, they took us in right away. Uh, they ordered the part, it was a specialty order. So as soon as they got the part, they put it in. So they had to set aside other jobs they were doing to help us with this, uh, I guess it's an Issue, emergency. Yeah. So that was great that they and did that. Amanda and Fatty. And Fatty. Yeah. Thirsty. <clears throat> yeah, so thank you for that and we are on our way and we're gonna have a good time uh, We're not gonna let this uh, spoil the trip. It's gonna be beautiful. It's all part of the fun. Yeah 
Here on a tire. Are we? Yep. We should have pulled into Weaver's then. The 48 PSI. Well, there's still a huge lineup. Yeah, well, we're losing air for some reason. We should go into a gas station yep. where it's nicely lit. Tim Horton's right here. Oh, yeah, there you go, Ben. Perfect. That's the one I was talking about. 45, we're losing air quickly. If you look at the uh, TPMS, we got a tire going low. It started off at 49, we're down to 40. We just pulled into a Tim Hortons. We're gonna check it out. What happened? No, look it. It's worn right down. Something. I nope. thought that's what that metal. See all that? Here, let me get close up. That's the uh, okay, the wire see. inside the tire. Uh, okay. Yeah, so it just wore down that far. So we need to take this in. We need to get an alignment. Well, that's what I don't I know if it call. requires a uh, new axle or if they can adjust this one. So we got to take care of that. And you don't want to tighten these up one right after the other. You want to tighten them up opposite each other. Now this is five instead of six lugs, so it's not exactly opposite. But you don't want to do them side by side. Why? Because it'll it might pop it out this way. Oh. So you want to go there to there to pop it out flat. Okay. Good to know. That's the only thing. Yeah, it was at 33 psi. So that's why you want to have everything easily accessible. Um, we're able to do this rather quickly. Now, if I would have had the proper attachment for my uh, impact driver, this would have gone a lot faster. But we're set here in Huntsville. We'll get a new tire for this. So once this is done filling up, we'll lower it and we'll use the torque wrench. We'll set them each to uh, 100 foot pounds, which is what it says on the sticker on the trailer. And uh, then we're good to go. So with this, I put it under here in the U-bolt, and I put this on top of it so the U-bolt sits on there. Never use your axle, never raise with your axle. I'll show you what I'm talking about. There's the U-bolt. You put it right under there to raise it up, and that's why I use that, just like that. Now, I gotta torque these. Torquing it, you go until you hear and feel the click, that means you're at the right foot pounds. There we go. And then you do the opposite one. When you get to the campsite tomorrow, when it's laid out, I'm gonna check these again, because sometimes they loosen up a little bit. You should always Check them after 100 kilometers or so after you uh, change the tire.
So this is 100% my fault. You heard, 100% his fault. Yep, I wasn't keeping up on the maintenance. I knew that the tire was wearing unevenly, but I figured we could make it for the full season. But the good thing is- Never I, assume. Right. I did have a TPMS, love the TPMS. It let us know immediately when we started losing air. If we didn't have the TPMS, we would have kept on going until we had a full blowout. And we probably wouldn't have known about the blowout until somebody warned us or until the trailer went on they fire would, or something. They wouldn't be able to tell at night. It's too right. Dark. So too dark. TPMS saved our butts in this one. Let's get going to the park. Wouldn't it be nice to actually get there tonight before midnight? We're already a couple of days okay. late. On we go. So we uh, are not sure if Mew Lake has uh, threaded uh, water taps. And we decided we didn't want to go past Mew Lake to the water fill dump station, which is six kilometers past Mew Lake. So we decided to stop in at Canis Bay Lake because we know that it has a threaded water tap. And so we're filling up there and then we're heading off to Mew Lake. And hopefully nothing else happens on this eventful trip. We should be getting to our campsite at oh, shortly after 11 p.m. Not ideal. Mule Lake Campground is one of 11 organized campgrounds along the Highway 60 corridor in Algonquin Provincial Park. The campground is laid out around Mew Lake in a coniferous forest setting dominated by white pine. So this is us, campsite number 50. Mule Lake has three campgrounds for a total of 55 electric and 60 non-electric sites. Campground has 24 non-electric sites. Hydro Campground has 55 electric sites and 8 yurts. Dog Free and Radio Free Campground has 36 non-electrical sites. Summer is ended, the leaves are turned. noise can be heard when camped at sites 67 to 82 and 112 to 123. Autumn comes too soon. If you're looking for a fabulous waterfront site, sites 83 to 122, right along Mew Lake, these are the sites to come to. They are non electric, but they are nice um, pine ground cover. But I don't know if you can see behind me, the highway is just right over there. But this is a fabulous view. In the non electric campgrounds, they do have bear bins. 
which are uh, food storage lockers. You can get them for free. You have to do a small deposit. They'll give you a key and you can store your food in there to uh, keep it safe so you don't have the bears. There are nine yurts. Autumn comes to and two cabins. There's one comfort station in Mule Lake Campground, uh, flush toilets, six showers, there's laundry facilities, um, washer dryer 250 a piece, and it is handicapped accessible. There are two beaches. This one's for the humans, and there's another one for the dogs. Mule Lake Campground is one of eight campgrounds along the highway corridor. And there are 15 hiking trails along that corridor that you can drive to with parking lots. This is the Mew Lake access to the old railway biking trail. There are four hiking trails within three kilometers of Mew Lake. If you take the old railway bike trail west, you'll go to the Track and Tower Trail. It's a seven kilometer bike ride to get there and the trail is seven kilometers. They have bike racks to leave your bikes and lock them up there. As far as fishing goes at Mew Lake, um, there's smallmouth bass, largemouth bass, and splake. There are no motorized boats allowed on the water, just your paddle boats, and there's no designated boat launch area, but there's a lot of spots along the water that you can put them in. Within a kilometer of our campsite, we just took the trails to the Lake of Two River stores. This is a very popular spot. It's a grocery Water and camp 65, store. Pick up at the table outside, 65. And as you can tell, it's also a restaurant and a spot to pick up some ice cream. Very popular spot. You should really check it out. And right over here is where they rent bicycles. All different types of bicycles, tandem bicycles, fat tired bicycles. You can rent them all right there and it is connected to the rail trail. What'd you get? Ooh, nice. And then there's a, the uh, moose one is a red one. It's got moose facts on the back. Is that in that one? Yeah. Ooh, Patty's gonna show us that one. Oh, Patty's got an outhouse. I, that's mine. That's yours, of course it is. Oh, you didn't. I did. Cheryl's lovable Lou review. This is Cheryl's Lou review, right here. Oh my gosh. Yes. This oh, is so appropriate. Yeah, nice. So those are the two I picked. Time for Cheryl's Lou Review. So the vault toilets in Mew Lake Campground are all identical. They are just pit toilets, which is just a hole in the ground. There's nothing special about them. They look like they've all been freshly painted inside, so it makes them a little bit brighter. Um, they do have some sanitizer and a hook on the door, which is helpful. Um, they are a little on the smellier side, but um, I was going to give them a wilted flower, but I, I'll be nice and give them a flower just because they're better than what I had expected them to be. So flower it is.
So we came out to do the Madawaska River Waterfall Trail. Uh, we were hiking along it and we noticed there aren't really any signs at all. There are no signs. And as we're walking along, I even pointed out and I said, look at this, there used to be a sign here. There used to be oh, a sign. Oh well, I wonder. So we continued on straight. Behind us, you can kind of see that sign way yeah. in the background. Instead of turning, right over there. Here, I'll show you. When you're walking, go right, veer right. Yeah, so we ended up doing a, a much longer walk than we intended, which is perfectly fine. This is a it was a beautiful area to walk through, and it's a it's a gorgeous day. It's about uh, 13, 14 degrees, yeah. um, but when you're walking, you heat up quite a bit. So uh, we made it a lot longer than it needed to be. Uh, we probably doubled. We we did make it to the fall little falls area, which was nice. Oh yeah. And we realized that we could have ridden our bikes the entire way. Mm -hmm. It's probably about two kilometers there from, from our campsite. Yeah. Um, but we probably ended up going about five kilometers or so. Mm -hmm. and, and we walked the whole thing. If we were to do it again, we'd be hopping on our bikes. We'd ride down to the waterfall. Yeah, it's real short distance if you go the proper way. Walk you got two ones or five, get another five. Oh, oh no, Cheryl, awesome. don't help them. Yeah, that helps one end. Yeah. All they need is a full house. Oh. What are we looking for? I don't know. We could do straight two, three, four, five when I can get a one or a six. But yeah, so it's just. And the sign it's was like missing way. for the trail that we were wanting to go on. I know. That's why we went around so far. Stop it. Oh. <laughs> there we go. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, Would everybody. The duck fat is a, is a thing. We're on the old railway trail. We're heading from our site at uh, Mew Lake to uh, her friend's site, Dilly and Patty. You've seen them in a couple of our videos before. Heading over to their site at Fog Lake. This is a really nice trail. It used to be a rail, so it's not too hilly. Nice, uh, fairly wide, easy for two way traffic. When you come to Algonquin, the Visitor Center is a must-do activity. This is the Cadillac of Visitor Centers of the Ontario Provincial Parks. It tells you everything about the area, has a bookstore, has a restaurant, has a nice lookout at the back. This is a great visitor center. Let's check it out. Visitor Center, there's a free Wi Fi zone.
kayak and paddleboard rentals are available at the Opiongo store and at the Portage store. They'll deliver them to your campground and they pick them up when you're done. The Apiongo store is also where you can head out for your backcountry canoe trip. They have all the rental equipment that you need. New Lake is a pretty small lake. So for paddling, it's only about a half an hour or so that you're really gonna be paddling in there. Uh, a better idea is to go to the next lake over to uh, Lake of Two Rivers. You can go in the entrance, it says East Beach and also the amphitheater. You can bring your kayaks or canoes down to the East Beach, put in there, and then you head off right down a beautiful little river that takes you to Pog Lake. You can go all through Pog Lake. Then when you get to the dam, there's a portage around the dam puts you into the river again, follow it along, and it comes out to Whitefish Lake. That is a really nice leisurely paddle and uh, some really nice views. There's an amphitheater with lots of available parking at the east beach of Lake of Two Rivers. If you're looking to do a little bit of group camping, there are 18 group campsites at White Sand Lake Campground, which is accessed through Pog Lake. It is serviced by vault toilets and water tap and free range of the water by boat or swimming. We're checking out the logging museum. It's a 1.3 kilometer hike. Open up the window. Don't forget to pick up your guide. Everything is turning into gold. When the autumn leaves are playing chases, puts a smile up on my face. They leave their branches one by one. We went to the main dump station at Algonquin. 
And uh, it turned out that both of their tanks, their black water flush tanks, were completely full. Up to the rim. We've never seen that before, but you could look right in and see it was completely full up to the rim. So that wasn't very good. So we couldn't, uh, couldn't dump there. Uh, Canis Bay Lake is supposed to be getting a dump station probably next year, but they haven't done it yet. So what we did is uh, we left the park and as we went out the west gate, we uh, told staff there that the uh, dump station is full so they can put a sign there so people like us don't have to pull in and see that it's full. And then uh, we came to Arrowhead. It has two dump spots and two water fill up spots. And uh, there's no uh, threading on the hoses so we can't use our black water flush. But you know what? At least we got the dump because uh, we couldn't do that at, uh, at Algonquin. And now we're off to get a spare tire. One thing I forgot to mention is park passes. When you go into Algonquin and now for Arrowhead 2, you don't actually have to stop at the uh, gate and uh, get a paper uh, pass to put on your car and to put on your uh, post. It's uh, all paperless now. So you just go right to your site and you make sure online that you uh, check in. So when we came to uh, Arrowhead, they could just run our plate and find out that we are still registered for today up until, what, 10 or 11 o'clock at night? Yeah. Closing. Yep, so uh, that's why we were able to come in here because you can use your park pass at any provincial park for the uh, uh, duration of your, of your reservation. Time again for Cole's Notes for Mew Lake at Algonquin Provincial Park. Here we are, it's fall. It is fall. Mm -hmm. Um, no, first of all, I just want to say we love Algonquin Park. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to a rating system, I think just for being a campground along the Highway 60 corridor in Algonquin, you're starting at a nine right there. Mm -hmm. And then you have to uh, rate it as per the campground, like Mew Lake, Canis Bay, Pog, Rock, whatever. They're so, all, they all have their own features. They're all good in their own way. Right. So this time we stayed at Mew and uh, we're going to rate it at that. Okay. So, so um, we had a good time here. Yes. Yes. This is a nice park. Uh, it's a good size. Um, the uh, lake, Mew Lake, is actually a little bit small for my liking. It's just a tiny little lake. It's, it's a small lake. Um, if you do like your paddle sports, you're not going to have any issues with white caps. Uh, no. Because it is a small lake, but you're going to get around the lake rather quickly. Mm -hmm. So. But there's plenty of, plenty of other lakes to go. Absolutely, on. you, you just go anywhere, anywhere. Some beautiful lakes, and I recommended earlier going into uh, East Beach of Lake of Two Rivers, and there's mm -hmm. a really nice paddle that you yeah. can do from there. So there's ample opportunity for paddling around here. It's just Mew Lake itself isn't that big, and mm -hmm. it's a little bit limited. Mm -hmm. For hiking, we only did one hike this trip. It was a super busy weekend because it's um, autumn and it's heavy traffic they have police uh monitoring uh what do you say people coming and going yeah so a couple of the trails were closed this weekend yeah so we did three hikes <laughs> we did we did the matawaska <laughs> we did the matawaska oh, yeah, uh river that was waterfall a nice one. hike yeah we made that a long one right yeah we did the uh lookout, lookout. hike <laughs> that and, was a and really then busy we did one. the fire tower trail <laughs> the fire did. tower trail is the one at the uh, visitor center that's uh, about 300 meters oh i don't <laughs> consider that a trail <laughs> no but they call it a trail well, that's not a trail that's i know just and a you're walk. on and you're on boardwalk the entire time that's no i don't consider that right but the lookout it was so busy we were like basically a lineup of people hiking along the trail. Yeah, we were getting a little bit claustrophobic from that. Yeah. Um, and we saved our hiking to do on Monday mm -hmm. because we knew that uh, on the weekend it would be absolutely crazy, so we're not gonna make any effort to uh, try to get out there and try to find parking mm -hmm. uh, on the weekend. So we did it on Monday, and on Monday still it was packed. Yeah, so if you're hiking in the fall, like prime leaf color changing season, 
try not to come on a weekend if yeah. you can. It's October 4th right now, and uh, checking the fall leaf report, we are in the peak, the absolute peak of the maple leaves changing right so now. So you get all your tour bus, buses coming. Yeah, and you lots have of tour to, buses. If you do plan on coming, you have to get your day pass, if you're staying just for the day, day pass five days in advance, and then they usually get filled up right away. Yeah, well, when we, uh, we looked on... Friday night when we were coming in, we saw this big sign saying that for Saturday, day passes are sold out. So there's no point in even coming here. You need to get your day pass up to five days in advance. But anyway, we, we bike the uh, rail trail. Yeah, the old railway trail. Which we've done many times in the past. So mm -hmm. that was a good ride. We went to Lake Two River Store, Opiongo. We did the usual logging museum and visitor center, which are two of the highlights. Yeah. The visitor center well, actually, that is was incredible. Our other hike we did was the logging right. museum. <laughs> so it could be four hikes that we did. Technically, yes, four yeah. hikes. Because the logging so. museum is a 1.3 kilometer hike. Yeah, it's a self-guided tour. Yeah. Um, um, in terms of the sites here. They're big. Yeah, New Lake, nice big flat sites. And if you get one of the ones behind us, waterfront. Ooh. Yeah. Electric, mm -hmm. we're in the uh, hydro campground, so everything mm -hmm. is... Uh, has hydro here, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of waterfront sites. You can put your uh, your kayaks, canoes, paddle boards right in there. Mm -hmm. So summertime, this would be awesome. Even in fall <laughs> now, it's pretty good. I wouldn't be going out in a paddle board unless mm -hmm. I had a wetsuit, but yeah, uh, yeah it's these are really nice sites. I'm impressed at the sites. Mm -hmm. Now, the beach area, it's, it's not your typical beach area. It's kind of, isn't it kind of grassy more so? Well, it has sand. A little bit of sand. Like it's not, for a beach goer, it wouldn't be prime, but it, it, it's fine. Let's just say it's not making it into our list of top 10 beaches. <laughs> and the dog beach is not a dog beach in this <laughs> campground. It's <laughs> like this section, this big that they can go in. But Yeah, you saw the dog beach. They call that a dog beach. It's a little space between two trees that yeah. uh, the dogs can go in. So, what we didn't realize when we came to Mew is that this is a white pine forest that so we're in. So there's not a lot of color in this campground, but right. outside of the campground, you'll find a lot of areas. Right in this campground, it's pretty green. Mm -hmm. And then we went over and visited some friends at Pog, and again, it's pine trees. It's pretty green all around there. But the road, uh, Highway 60, that's where you see the leaves, and they're beautiful. And uh, uh, the lake we went East Lake. At the theater. That's at Lake of Two Rivers. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was very that nice. That was very colorful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, as far as campgrounds go, uh, Canis Bay Lake. Oh, you don't want me to say that? No. No, Canis Bay Lake <laughs> is stunning <laughs> with the leaves. Uh, we were, this time last year, we went there. Uh, I'm going to put that video right up over here over Cheryl's head. But uh, yeah, that's what, if you want to see the leaves, that would be the one to go to. Now, there might be other ones too. I don't know. We only know Mew, Pog, and Canis Bay. Well, yeah. Um, as Cole's unluck would have it, we have not seen any bears or moose again on this trip, which mm. we are very sad. We, we saw a fox. Oh, and that, that was, was coming at in night, late at night. Coming in, so we just barely saw a fox. And our, our usual ducks and chipmunks, those are our typical wildlife yeah. views. But you know what? We are so glad that we made it on this trip because as you saw, we almost didn't make it. Mm -hmm. uh, it was quite an here. adventure, quite an adventure, and uh, hopefully we don't have to do it again. Yeah, and quite some expense. <laughs> <laughs> and on our way home, we're hitting the uh, Fountain Tire in Huntsville, and we're They're gonna very get. Good. Yeah, we're, we've used them before. <laughs> we're gonna get our uh, uh, a new tire put on the the rim, and then we're gonna swap it, put it back on, take the spare off, put yep. the spare back uh, onto the front of the trailer. Mm -hmm. So that's on the way home, we, so we still have to do that. So I guess so that's time a for a rating. Oh yeah, a yeah we gotta give it a rating. Gotta give it a rating. So like I said, we're starting off at a nine, and if the part, if the campground wasn't all that great, it would go down from a nine. Well, it's if, not gonna go down. No. You can't really go down here. And yeah, and if it is stupendous, incredible, fantastic, it'd go up from a nine. I would say this is very nice, and I would say it's, it's even with a nine. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. yeah that's our rating. Back. Yep. It's a nine. It's a nine. So. This is our second last trip of the season. So in a few days, in a few days, we are off to Bronte Creek for our Thanksgiving family, friends, Thanksgiving. 
Yep. Join us for that. It's a big family time. Uh, all our kids I are going to so. be there. I think they're all going to be there. Yep. That would be nice. And we're going to have a couple more families <laughs> and all their kids. So, so they're going to be joining us. So stay tuned. We're doing the Madawaska River. Yeah. like an empire baseball. What's the signal? What's the signal, coach? <laughs> Dancing through the last days of September.